welcome to week four. You made it. You're into the first month of our class. You're doing great. Just keep showing up. Keep doing things your way. This will be a really easy and um, informative semester for you. So make sure uh, you watch through this whole video because there's some explanations that are not included in some of the formats um, that explain what um, you have to complete for this week. So the first thing is to complete worksheet number two. So my best advice for you there is to wait till I give you feedback on worksheet number one um, so that you can make any corrections that need be uh, to give you earn you the most amount of points. Um, it's going to be by the same columnist, a completely different article. So make sure you're following that formatting. Um, the second thing I included some writing templates and some signal phrases uh, so that when you do your summary paraphrase and quote work, you have some ideas of what to lead. If you've never done that before, introduced phrases and introduced quotes and introduced summaries and paraphrases, um, you might want, you need to look through those so that you have um, a really easy way to format and that you do it correctly and again get the most points, which is what I'm sure you're aiming for. So the next thing is to do the paraphrase summary and quote assignment and that is, is these are all due on Sunday but the paraphrase summary and quote assignment does take a little bit more time than you might think so you need to read the whole article that is attached after my directions um, by Charles Krauthammer and you will read that and then you to summarize you're going to read the entire article and tell me in a couple short sentences concisely what was that article about it helps because you're reading um, you know you read the title and in week two of this class, we went over how to write summaries, so you can reference back to that if you need help with. But basically, it's the entire work, but in your own words, not in the order that the person, other person wrote it, um, not in the formatting that the other person wrote it. Um, things like titles, things like names, things like uh, dates, all are fine. If there's group titles, those are also fine to use in your paraphrase summary or quote. You just can't use in your summary or your paraphrase the word order that the person used or just synonyms that would replace it. So you want to read the entire article and then in your own words, how would you tell a friend if you were going to say, oh, I just read this great article by Charles Krauthammer or this terrible article and this is what it said. This is what it was about, basically. That's what your summary is going to be. You don't have to include small details. You're just doing an overview. This is what this article is about if you basically want to read it. You must introduce it and you must cite it. Summaries are only cited by the year because you can't have a paragraph, it's the whole thing. Um, paraphrases, you're going to introduce, you're going to paraphrase two sentences, any two sentences in that article. In the article. It can be two in a row, it can be two separate sentences, it doesn't matter, but you're going to put in your own words what those sentences say basically. Introduce, you know, Charles Krauthammer, do your, read the what he wrote, and then in your own words, in the own order of your speech, put um, what those two sentences were basically about. Um, and then you'll have to cite the paragraph number, and um, uh, you would have introduced it with author and title, so you don't need to include the author's name, because you already did include it when you introduced it. Um, so you'll do that, and then you'll do the, a quotation. So it asks you to introduce a quote. And to explain it, uh, give us some sort of background and quote it directly. So I'm not asking you to just take any quote out of there, uh, you know, quoting Charles Krauthammer anywhere within the article. I'm asking you to take one of his quote, one of his sentences in there, and quote it as if you're introducing it. So um, the quote can be and should be word for word. You're not allowed to change words in quotations unless you put the ellipsis in, which are those three dots or you can put the brackets in if you're adding words. So I have all that explained on the worksheet, but I just wanted to kind of remind you of that while you're working on this. So quotes you have to use word for word within the quotation marks, with the exceptions I mentioned, um, or you need to go ahead and um, introduce it, always introduce it, give us some sort of context about what this quote is about, quote it, and then cite it. If you have any questions, you can email me. I'm happy to have, um, you know, Zoom meetings, WebEx meetings, UGIM meetings, whatever we need to do. 
um, to clarify things for you. Um, but have a great week and good luck. You're doing great. Um, please let me know if you have questions.